Hello again. I'm glad you are here for the first section of lesson three of the Bible, the Christian course. I'm Pastor Davison. Welcome. When something out of the ordinary happens, I often ask myself, is this true? Or is this something someone made up? When I hear this was on WhatsApp or Facebook, I'm not convinced. But if someone says to me, I was there, I saw it with my own eyes, then he or she has my full attention. Witnesses give a lot of credibility to an event. When we are told about an event or story, the more data we have, the more certain we are that the story is true. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit empowers Peter to witness about Jesus. This is the same Jesus who 50 days earlier had been unjustly condemned to death by the temple leaders. The Pharisees believed that the people would forget about Jesus. But Peter is led by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news about Jesus. Peter told the people the truth. These were harsh words for the people who heard them, words that had an effect. The effect of the law is that it calls for repentance and prepares the heart to hear the wonderful message of the gospel. The Lord calls people to faith through that gospel message. Fifty days earlier, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times. He was afraid of persecution and claimed he did not know Jesus. Now we see a big change in him. Peter was a witness, enabled by the Holy Spirit, announced the gospel, and the young church grew that day. New Christians rejoiced to know they were forgiven. Let's review the story of Peter's testimony. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. 
When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Peter preached the law and the gospel at Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit led many people to come to faith. This formed the first Christian church. Peter's preaching of the law was clear. You crucified the Lord. That you includes us. Jesus died for our sins on the cross. We also hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection giving us the certainty that our sins have been forgiven and we have received new life in him. We have the certainty of this in the proclamation of the good news that lead us to faith in Christ Jesus. And he gives us the personal certainty of his forgiveness through our baptism. Again, I'm Pastor Davison, please, Join the next section of the lesson in the live class for further study and begin thinking about how you will complete your final project. Until then, may God bless your efforts. <music>